Okay, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're also starting another playlist on Tensor Calculus. Uh, this is an amalgamation of things you might see on YouTube. Uh, play, people like uh, Xylix is one particular project that works on a 40-part series on Tensor Calculus. Eigen Chris is also someone who works on this kind of stuff. My whole point in doing, making this playlist is to sort of take all of those guys that you see on YouTube and put them all in one playlist where you can see tensor calculus full and through. And let's go ahead and get started with this playlist. I'm going to be doing this alongside uh, talking about differential geometry as well. So without further ado, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you like this kind of content also, make sure to go onto my Patreon page where you'll find exclusive content and early content. Let's get into the material. So today we are looking at tensors, and we want to think about tensors as maps for right now. And we're going to go through a couple of videos as with this point of view in mind, and then we'll shift a little bit. So we want to think, we want to consider uh, the vector space V. Okay, the vector space V is this typical vector space you're probably used to when you're looking at when if you say you've taken linear algebra. And we have some arbitrary vector v, right? So v is in big V. It's a vector. And the whole point of a tensor here is to take this vector and map it onto the real numbers. So this vector is going to go into some machine. This machine we're calling right now as a rank 0 and 1 tensor. We'll come across this. Uh, we'll delineate this sort of notation in a bit. But this 0, 1 tensor is going to take this vector and map it onto a number. That's the whole point of what tensors do. And depending on how many vectors you're mapping to real numbers, we're going to change that the rank of that tensor. So in this specific example, V is a member of the vector space big V. Therefore, the tensor map, the tensor is a map from the vector space V to the real numbers. And let's Keep in mind also that v is a vector and therefore can be written as a weighted sum of basis vectors. And this is a whole concept of a vector space, right? So a vector space. And what I mean by that is that we have our, say we're in three dimensions. Uh, and if we're in three dimensions, so we have three basis vectors and a vector within the vector space is a weighted sum of each one of these basis vectors. We can rewrite this. We can rewrite a, b, and c to be a0, a1, and a2. And in this way, we can also write uh, basis vectors as e0, e1, and e2. And so with this notation, we can pack it all up into one sum. And then with the Einstein summation convention, we can we just get rid of the summation. Okay. So how can we map a vector to a real number? Because the whole point here is tensors are maps from some number of vectors to the real numbers. We consider a new type of object that we're going to call a covector, such that when we take the, say, when I'm not, I don't really want to call this the inner product right now, but when we take a combination of the basis vectors for the uh, for the vector space, or for the vector, and the basis vectors for, we'll do this in a different color, the basis vectors for our now defined covector space, we say that the relationship is given by the uh, Kronecker delta, where if mu is equal to nu, then this is going to be 1. If they're not equal, then this is going to be 0. Let's see how this works as a mapping. So we start off with, this is our vector, and this is going to be some arbitrary covector. Okay. So we, these B mu's and A mu's are just constants, so they can come out. And we have, now we have this right here, right? So this is what we've seen here. I, I'll delineate this out, right? So we have E0, E0. E0 e0, e1, e0, e2, and there's going to be more contributions, right? There's going to be, uh, say, e3, uh, e2, right? There's going to be a lot of these. I'm just not 
going to write all of them out. But we know, given that we've defined this, that anything where we don't have the same, where, where the where the superscript and the subscript are the same, where they are the same, this is going to be one, just sort of siphoning out everything in which the upper and lower indices are the same. And so, and then where they're different, the whole term is going to go to zero because you're multiplying by zero. And so we're left with this right here. And we can do an Einstein sum and we get this. And remember, these are just two numbers. This is all, again, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, this is just a number. So all of this add together is going to give us a number, right? So that's why this is a map. This thing can act when it, when it's with, when it's acting on uh, this vector, it gives us a real number, right? So the vector, you could sort of think of this as the vector here is being fed into this thing that we're calling a covector, and it's giving us a real number. So this covector is acting as a map from a vector to a real number. Let's see now. Um, so, okay, actually, before we see how this is going to work with two vectors, uh, we... Uh, so this covector is an object that maps the vector to real numbers or to a real number. We call this a covector for reasons that we're going to see later. This, these things are going to transform uh, with um, the with the vector basis, but we'll see that in the next video. And but more generally, we, we can call this thing a rank 0, 1 tensor, where the second slot here tells us the if the, the, this is a covector, right? this is an, a one covector object. Whereas uh, for this thing, we call this a vector, and but, and but more generally, we can call it a rank 1, 0 tensor. Okay, so... We'll just say that this is a co-vector, and this is a vector. Okay. All right. So we can generalize this concept of a tensor by now considering the following picture. So let's take two vectors now. We want to feed these into some machine, and we want to get out a real number. So let's see how this is going to work. So here's our tensor, T alpha beta. And here's our two vectors, right? So V and W. And we define this thing called the tensor product. We'll see what this is later, but let's see just how this works. So we have our two vectors. These are the input arguments of the tensor. So that you could sort of think of this as the tensor as a function of V and W. Okay, so when we flesh out this tensor product and we distribute it to each one, this is how that distribution is going to go. Then we say uh, T alpha beta is, so this all is equal to T alpha beta times V mu, right? So V mu is uh, right here, and here's its basis. Its basis is right here, so I'll just underline that in green. And then here's that uh, e alpha, right? So e alpha is going to get a, get applied to e mu, whereas e beta is going to get applied to e nu. And as we've defined before, that this is Kronecker delta. This is a Kronecker delta. So this is what we get. And t. So this is all actually equal now to these can only be. This can only be. Um, a number, or these can only be, th these are only one if alpha is equal to mu or and if beta is equal to nu. So we'll change these two guys to get rid of the Kronecker deltas. Okay. And now this is, this is a real number, right? This is a real number because when we flesh this out, we have that, uh, so the A's have to match up, right? So A, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. 
and the B's have to match up 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0. We get more terms also. I'm just giving the first three. Uh, but again, numbers, numbers, numbers. Therefore, when you add numbers together, this is a real number. Okay? <clears throat> and so, uh, using, so this was the Einstein summation convention right here. This is the Einstein summation, summation convention. Fleshed out, this is what it looks like. We're summing over A and B, or alpha and beta, right? So alpha and beta, we're summing over them, and that's what this looks like. So we see here how a tensor of uh, this, what we're calling this rank 0, 2 tensor, is acting on uh, these two vectors, okay? So a 0, 2 tensor maps two vectors, a 2, 0 vector, you'll see it's going to map two covectors, okay? So the whole name of the game here is maps, right? So things map, maps vectors, things map covectors, okay? So there's a few things to note about this tensor product. So as I said, we're going to get into now what this tensor product actually means. So this is a tensor product, meaning that the basis vectors for this tensor are all of this, right? So this is sort of a packaged uh, way of saying that this is a combination of the, this this here is a combination of all of the possible combinations of the basis vectors right? and we need two of these basis vectors in order to do that mapping that we did before okay so the we can think of these as cartesian products this is a cartesian um product of each one of these uh, basis vectors, this here is a tensor product, right? So the tensor product is going to be E0, E0, E1, E0, E2, E0. And these are all, you can think of these as basis vectors because T alpha beta is a weighted sum of all of them, right? So when we once we put the T alpha beta in there, T alpha beta, then we have, we get all this, right? So, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so forth, right? So, in this way, that if it's a weighted sum of base, basis vectors, that again screams this is a vector space, right? So, vector... Space. This is a vector space because we have a weighted sum of all of these t of all of the basis vectors, and that's what basis that's what vector spaces are. T alpha beta therefore forms its own vector space with uh, the basis vectors and acts as a map for two vectors. Right? So we take the two. So this is back to our original picture. The uh, this uh, v and w, when they are input into this rank zero two tensor, we get a real number. Another way of thinking about this, and this is you can go on to the channel x y l y x y l y x. Um, this is the someone's YouTube channel. I would highly recommend going to his channel in which he talks about this as well. I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm just going to be bringing in more sources as well because I, I think this is super interesting. And my apologies for the dog. And um, But yeah, I'm going to be taking multiple sources from YouTube and from books and combining this all into one playlist on Tensor Calculus. But anyways, uh, we have a vector space here. We, so de we define our vector space. This vector space has... Uh, mu or has the v and w and then we have a rank zero two tensor space now i'm realizing right now that this is in blue and this here is in blue don't want to make those mix those up so maybe think of this as being in red instead because this is not the same as that w this is a completely different um vector space this is a rank this is a vector space in which we have rank zero two t 
tensor space. That's a little weird looking, but I rec this is a vector space that contains rank 0 2 tensors. Okay. So, might ask the question, what about three vectors? What if we want to map three vectors in some vector space located at some point in space? I'm going to take three vectors and we want to map them to a real number. Well, the way we do that is going to be like this, right? We have uh, V, Z, and W. These are three vectors in our vector space. And we can all feed these into one object. This is what we're going to call 0, 3, rank 0, 3 tensor. And that's going to be mapped to some uh, to some number. Okay? Now, if we want to be even more general, we can actually map two vectors and a covector, right? So we can map V and W are in V. All right, so this is the vector space big V. And but B with this is a little bit uh, you won't see this notation. I kind of just did this to delineate the difference between vectors and covectors. But B here is in vector star, right? So this is a covector space. It's a vector space, but it's a space vector space of co vectors. And this is the spaces with vectors. Uh, this, so this is the vector space. This is the co the vector space of co vectors. Okay, it's important to understand the difference, right? It, we want to say vector space of co vectors because vector space really is the definition of that. Is we just have weighted sums of basis vectors. And there's a little bit more to it, uh, but then there's objects that can be placed in vector spaces that act in the ways that a vector space would dictate. But anyways, we have our two vectors and we have our covector. We can feed these into a giant machine, right? And this giant machine uh, is going to be a rank 1, 2 tensor. So the 2, again, these two guys here are going to sum with these two. And this one upstairs is going to sum with this one. And what we get is a real number. Okay? That's the whole point here. We're, going, we're talking maps, right? So we're mapping vectors to real numbers. We're mapping combinations of vectors to real numbers. We're mapping combinations of vectors and covectors to real numbers. And you can see, you, you'll be able to see how this work works if you do this calculation for any of those, because you'll see it's really just a matter of this sort of distribution, and then everything else sort of follows on through with that Kronecker delta. And we'll do more of these examples later. But we can also visualize this as a vector space. Here's our vector space containing V and W, right? So this contains V and W. So I'll just write in here V and W. Then we have our rank, we have a rank 0, 2 tensor space. Uh, we also have a rank 1, 2 tensor uh, vector space. Remember these are vector spaces with tensor objects in them, tensor-like objects in them. Uh, but anyways, we can st stack so many types of vector spaces into one onto one point in space, and these vector spaces can contain uh, vectors. They can contain tensors. They can contain scalars, covectors. One point in space packs a lot of information into it, which is actually kind of interesting if you think about it. But anyways, that is what I have for this video. We have sort of gone over the bare bones of an introduction. Uh, into tensors as maps. In the next video, we're going to be talking about tensors and their transformations and how they're different from and how they transform differently from other types of objects, such as, such as vectors and covectors. But with that being said, make sure again to hit that like and subscribe button. You can go onto my Patreon page for exclusive content and or early content. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.